Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This video is the second part of a two-part extravaganza all about building a classifieds or for sale items list experience within SharePoint Online. So the first part is a previous video. I'll have the link in the description and it'll probably be linked around here somewhere. It was all about the end user experience and using some JSON formatting to create a beautiful list experience that we could embed on a page. So if you haven't seen that yet or you want the context for this video, by all means, go ahead and look at it. This video is part two and we're going to focus on the process of how we can ultimately allow people to submit items to our for sale list. Now, while the example here is a for sale classified items list, you could actually use this for anything. All we're talking about really is having a list and allowing people to populate it from a Microsoft form and we use Power Automate to bring it all together. Now, there's a couple of challenges that I actually didn't see coming around images and currency fields and stuff like that. So stick with me and I'll show you how to get around it. So with all that being said, sit down, relax, and let's get to it. This video is sponsored well by me and the SharePoint Internet Site Builder Masterclass. This is a course that I've put together for anybody who has inherited an existing internet site or indeed wants to build a brand new department internet site. The course focuses on the most common requirements I see again and again in the internets that I build and it acts as a step-by-step -step guide on how to create them. There's a big focus on user experience within this course and I've designed it so you don't have to be a techie to take it. This course is aimed at any business user who wants to up their game within SharePoint. So if you're interested, there's a link below along with a tasty discount to get you going. Now back to the video. So now we have the list here on the page and we can display items. We have to think about how are people actually going to add items to this list or add the ads. And I think you've got a few different options depending how fancy or advanced you want to get. A very simple solution would be if you put a mail to link behind this button, you could just get people to send you an email. Uh, and that would probably work. Although you might have to go back and forwards with, you know, how much text you want and stuff like that. And information about the categories and images. Now you could also create a page on this site, which explains people, you know, what information you need to, to populate an ad. And I think that's the quickest way to do it. Although it's a bit basic. Another way that I thought we might be able to do it is if we come into our list, there's a relatively new feature called forms here. And this is where we can create a custom form for this list, which will let anybody submit to the list, even if they don't have edit rights on the list. And I did think that was going to be the winner. The only limitation with this is with these forms, it won't let people submit an image. Now the image is kind of core to our ad. So I discounted that option. But if you didn't have an image and what you were trying to display, forms would be probably the handiest when you just come in here, create a new form and you can choose what columns you want to offer to people to fill in. So the third option that we can look at is using Power Automate to do this in Microsoft Forms. It's a little bit more involved, but it gets us to a point where, you know, we can get people to fill in a form which will populate the list. And then we can also get the image and move it into the site. Now there's a few quirks in doing this that I came across, which I'll show you how I resolved. So let's have a look at what we want to do. So the first thing we want to do is build a Microsoft form that's going to capture the information that we want. So in the menu in the top left, we're going to click that and we're going to choose Microsoft Forms. And from within here, we're going to say new form. And now you can build the form out in, you know, however suits you. I'm going to call this form submit an ad to because I already have number one. Um, you'd put in a description here. Please complete the following form to submit an ad. Now I'm not going to spend time on making this form look pretty. I think this video is going to be long enough as it is. So we'll be basic enough. So first thing we want to do is we want to add in a text column and this is going to be title of your ad and it's definitely required. We'll add in another text and this will be item description. And this is going to be a long answer. And what we want to do is come over here and we're going to say restrictions and we're going to say length max count is equal to 200, right? So that's the character limit we've put on our list form. So we'll match it here on this form and we'll add another text column. And this is going to be the price and we'll put in a validation in here where it must be a number. Then we'll add in a choice column and this is going to be the category of item. So these options should match the category options we have on our list. So we've got item tickets and accommodation. We'll add in a text column and this is your preferred contact details. Okay, so this is where they can put in their email or something like that. And then we'll add in one more, which is going to be an upload file. And this is going to be upload an image. And we can come over here to the three dots and we can say file type and we only want image type files to be allowed. And that's pretty much what we need. So we can click collect responses and we can copy the link to our form. And then we come back to our page, we'll put it into edit mode and we'll just update the link in the submit and add button. So we'll pop that in there like that and we republish the page. And now when somebody comes here and they want to submit an ad, they click the button and 
and they get our form in here. Now you can make the form look nicer, but you know, it's functional for the moment. So that takes care of the part of people giving us the information, but now we need to get it into our list and we need to look at how we're gonna manage that image. So this is the automation part. So what we'll do again is we'll come up here and we'll go to Power Automate. And once in here, I'm gonna click Create. And over here where we search templates, I'm gonna type in Forms and hit Enter because we can start off from a template where some of the work is done. So I'm gonna go for Record Form Responses in SharePoint. So now we're in the Power Automate Editor, okay? And this is basically saying, when someone submits something to a form, get the details of what they submitted and then create an item somewhere in SharePoint. So we just need to fill in the blanks, okay? So we can click one of these and we can pick a form. I'm gonna click Submit and Add To. I'm gonna get the responses. So it's gonna say, well, what ID do I need? So we can click this down here, pick our form again, and we've got the response ID, so that's perfect. And then it says Create an Item. So we just need to tell it where, okay? So Site Address is gonna be our Stuff for Sale site. And the list we want to create stuff in is gonna be our Classifieds to list. And we can see the title here, but if we click show all, we'll see all of the columns in the list. And now we can pick the response details and add them into populated. So for example, in title, okay, if I click this little lightning bolt here, it's gonna say, well, what questions in your form match the title here? So title of your ad is what we want submitted to the title column within the list. So we'll pop that in there. We'll come back to price now in a second. Uh, for item description, again, click the lightning bolt and we'll see item description. Status value, I'm gonna just pick new static value, okay? Um, because all items coming in aren't new. For category then, I'm gonna say enter custom value. Again, hit the lightning bolt, and we wanna choose the category that someone entered. Now, owner claims is just the owner column in our list. So again, custom value, hit the lightning bolt. I'll click see more, and I'm gonna say responders email, okay? That's what I'll put in there. And for contact method, I'll hit the lightning bolt again, and we'll put in your preferred contact details. Now, the reason I didn't do the price one straight away is because it's a bit tricky, uh, trickier than I thought it was gonna be, to be honest. So I come in here and I have price, and if I click the lightning bolt, I only see response ID. I'm not seeing the price column. And long story short, what the problem is, is price is a currency type column, and then Power Automate is expecting currency because it's referencing our SharePoint list. But the price question field, was not uh, currency, it was number. So we need to take what we got from there and we need to turn it into currency. So we need to add a few steps after get response details. So I'm gonna hide that, okay? Now this new designer view of Power Automate doesn't work too well for me for some reason. So I'm just gonna toggle this back to the old one, which ends up looking something like this. Um, all the options are the same, okay? So you can still work in the new designer if you want. I'm just gonna work in here like this. So basically what we need to do is we need to get the price uh, submission from here and transform it into currency so that it'll be recognized in here. So to do that, right, what you want to do is insert a new step. We're gonna add an action. We're gonna type in init and we're looking for initialized variable, okay? So this is just a way to take out that value and then we can use it and do something with it. So enter variable name and we're gonna call this price. It's gonna be a string because it's just a, a bit of text and the value is gonna be price. So now we've extracted the price from this that we can do something with it and effectively transform it, okay? So we have price to work with, then we add in another step, and this one is called compose. So we'll add that in here. And effectively what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our string, our text of the price digits, let's say, and we're gonna turn them into an integer. So with our compose for inputs, I'm gonna say add dynamic content. I'm going to go to an expression. I'm gonna type in INT brackets, and then I'm gonna come over here to dynamic content. I'm gonna click my initialized variable price, pop it in like there, and I'm gonna say, okay. So that's what we need in there. And that's fine, that's gonna do it. And then the last step in this part is we need to format what we got out of this into a currency, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and say, add an action, say format number, okay? And under number to be formatted, I'm gonna choose the outputs of my compose. And then in the format, we want a currency. And then you just add in your location and I'll give you the correct currency for it. So I'll scroll all the way down here to Ireland, which is this here, which will work fine. And now we can come back into our create item and in here where we have price, we can stick in our outputs. And then we can actually populate our ads with what people submitted, okay? So we're gonna add in one more action so we get notified when someone has submitted this. So if anything goes wrong down here, we'll always know that it was submitted and we can check it out manually. So we have the responses submitted, get the details, that's fine. And then we'll come in here and we'll say add an action. We'll type in message and we want post message in a chat or a channel. So effectively, when this happens, the next thing you want to do is be notified that it happened, which makes sense, right? So post as flow bot, that's fine. Drop down here, where do you want to post it to? I'm going to just say in a chat with the flow bot, who's the recipient? And in here we can say, what's the body or what's the 
the actual content of the chat and we'll say a new ad was submitted and we can put in some details we'll say the title of the ad was and we'll say submitted by we'll come down here and we'll say responders email then we'll say get to it peace what we'll do is we'll just come up here to record form responses in SharePoint 2. That doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So I'm going to say record add responses in SharePoint and then we'll click save. So now that should all be hooked up and working. You might have noticed we didn't mention our image at all in this. And that's cause Power Automate, when we use this workflow, it's not pulling through the image and letting us populate SharePoint with it. So we need to address that separately in another flow. And so the reason for that is that when you submit a file through a Microsoft form, if you created the form yourself, the file gets saved in your OneDrive in my files and a folder called apps. And then you'll see a folder in here called Microsoft Forms. And then you'll see the different forms you have. So you can see here, here's the form I created a few minutes ago with the upload file and it's created a folder within it. So when we come in here, there's a folder within that called question. Uh, and inside question, we're going to see all images submitted. So if you think about it, every time our form is submitted, the first Power Automate flow we created there is going to populate the list items with everything except the image. The image itself is going to land in here. So what we can do is we can create another flow that looks in this folder, that monitors this folder, and every time a new image is added, we can get it transferred over to the SharePoint site. So let's do that, okay? So we know where the image is going to end up, which is here, but we want to create a new location to store with in SharePoint, okay? Because with this process, I suppose, if everything is going into my personal OneDrive, that's not gonna be great if they go on holidays or something like that. So we can come back to our site, we'll come into site contents, and we're gonna create a new document library. We'll call it add images, we'll say create. Now it's worth saying that, you know, I'm no genius at Power Automate or anything like that. This is the ways I found to do it, but anyone please feel free to comment below if you have a, an alternative way to do it or a better way to do it, because I'm sure both of those things exist. But if you've made it with me this far, you might as well stick around to the end because we're almost there. So we have the place to put the image. Okay, brilliant. So we'll go back over to Power Automate and we'll come back to create. We're going to create a new flow from blank, right? So we're going to say an automated cloud flow and we're going to call it transfer images to site. Okay, and the trigger, the thing that kicks all this off is we're going to say is when a file is created. Okay, and we're looking for the OneDrive option because that's where we're hooking into. Now be careful on this one, right? See here, I have when a file is created and that looks like OneDrive and it says OneDrive and that would be brilliant. But then I see another one down here that is when a file is created, OneDrive for business. I want the OneDrive for business one, right? That's the one I'm gonna use with my kind of company 365 account. This is more of a personal thing, right? So I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna say create. So we can click on this fella here and it's basically gonna look for the folder. So it's where is it monitoring? So we're gonna click this. So I'm gonna say root, that's the root of OneDrive. I'm gonna say what's my apps, Microsoft Forms, add to, and remember it was in this question folder where the images actually end up. So we'll pop that in there. Okay, so that was straightforward enough. So we're gonna say monitor this area for when a file is created. So what do we want to do next? Well, when the file is created, we wanna get the content of the file. So we're gonna say add an action. I'm gonna type in get file content. OneDrive for business get file content. That's what I'm looking for. So for file, we're gonna choose the lightning bolt. And I'm gonna choose file identifier, which comes from this action here when a file was created. So I'll pop that in there. And that's all we have to do on that point. So now we're at a phase that we know when the file is created, we know what's in the file, and now we want to move it to SharePoint. So we're gonna add in another action here, and we're gonna say create file. So we just need to tell it the details. So what's the site address? Well, we know that's our stuff for sale site. Then we need to tell it where. So we click the folder and we'll see we want it in add images, which is fine. We'll say the name of the file. We'll click the lightning bolt and we'll choose file name. So the name of the image that was popped into OneDrive. Content of the file, we'll hit this again and we'll say file content. We can hide all of this and we are good. We'll click save. So now we've addressed getting the information from our form into our list and we've addressed moving our file from OneDrive to our SharePoint site. So the idea here is if someone submits an ad, they're going to fill in the form. That's as much as they care about. They click submit and then you're going to get a Teams message to tell you this happened. And then your list is going to be populated and the image is going to be in your SharePoint site. So then you just need to really update the new list item with your image. Um, and again, there's probably a more streamlined way to do that. Hopefully someone might recommend it below. So let's give it a test, right? So back on our page, let's say submit an ad. We get our form. What's the title of our ad? Well, I'm going to be selling some magic beans. Okay. I'm going to say super healthy and will turn you into Harry Potter if you take it enough. Also great for planting as they will grow a big ladder. Something like that. Now, how can you put a price on that? I'm going to say 199 which seems fair enough. Item is the category. Preferred contact method. Well, I'll just say my email. Upload my file, which is my magic beans image. And I'm going to click submit. 
So remember, what's meant to happen here? I'm going to get a message in my Teams. The list item is going to be created and I should see the image within my images folder. So let's cross our fingers. So if I come into Teams, I can see that I've got a workflows chat here and I can see a new ad was submitted. Title is Magic Bean submitted by Dan. So that worked perfect. Happy days. And if I come into my list, my classifieds to list, I can also see that Magic Beans has appeared here with all of the information I asked for, which is fantastic. Now we just don't have the image. But if I come into add images, I'll see that the image has turned up here, which is super. So now all I have to do is add my image to my ad and then we're done. So coming back to my magic beans, I'll select it. Now with the image, right, unfortunately, right, I have to download the image and then re-upload it in here because my ad image only gives me the option to display or to upload an image rather than reference run on a site. So now I've added my image in here, which looks great. And when I go back to my page, I'll see that it's there. Now, one thing, again, if we're talking process, right, you might want to moderate these things as they come in. So where we have our ad view, okay, what you could do is rather than having the items automatically appear before you've done the image, what you might do is leverage the fact that we have this new tag and you might filter the list. So the displayed view that we have here that we put on our page filters out new items until you've basically approved them and tagged them as available and then they'll show. So you can work with the filters in this as well to hide stuff if you need to. But if you want to do that, we can just click the filters icon here and we can show stuff only when they are available. Okay, so say we don't want to show new or sold. Okay, and then we'll see the little asterisks in here, which means we've changed it, but it's not saved. So we'll click the drop down, save view as save. And now we've just got our available items in here. And that means you can be kind of admin in this list in here. This is your master list, but the one you want to show everybody is this one here, which will work just fine. So there you have it. You've made it to the end. Congratulations. And if you've made it through part one and part two, well, then you are simply awesome. And you've learned hopefully a lot because I certainly did in pulling these videos together. There were definitely some unforeseen challenges that came up and I'm happy with the way we got around them. I'm sure there's people that have way smarter ways of doing it than I do. But from my point of view, it works and it's functional and it looks all right as well. So I'm happy enough with that. If you did get anything out of these videos, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel as we're always trying to grow it, you know? And if you don't, don't worry about it either. I'm just glad you made it this far. So until next time and our next strange adventure, who knows what it'll be. Uh, see ya.